Hi everyone and welcome to another episode in our Ability System series. In this episode we're going to fix a couple of things uh, before we head off into actual casting of our fireball. So last time we did the cast bar and then we made it so it was successful or interrupted. We're now going to make it actually launch and animate a fireball out of the player's hands. So um, to begin with, as I said, we're going to fix a couple of things. Well, one thing in particular. The bug we got is that if I push the ability action and interrupt it, push it again straight away, the cast bar doesn't show. It still casts it because a little hello message comes up. It's just the cast bar goes invisible, it remains invisible until the animation for the previous one, the fading out, has ended. So to fix that, you want to go into your ability system and go into the cast bar UI. And when we start the cast, we're going to do two things. We're first of all going to say, uh, grab our interrupted animation out and set to stop the animation. That's the first thing. Now, when we stop an animation, it is going to trigger this and change it to be hidden. We don't want that. We want to make it visible again. So we're going to go in here and set visibility and make it visible. Plug it into the remainder of our code there. Okay. So now that should fix our issue. So if I interrupt it and play it again, it resets it properly. Okay. So the other issue is that if I've cast a, bar, uh, cast a spell successfully, then move, the interrupt message appears. So it's detecting a false interrupt. It's, it still sees there's ability there, therefore it should interrupt it. So still on our cast bar, go to your interrupted cast uh, event, or function rather, and you'll see this start here where it says get the ability and see if it's valid. Now of course it's still valid because it'll be in on the player's hands being flung out. So it's still there. What we need to do is make sure uh, check see if the cast bar is still there as well. So you can get the visibility. And uh, not get visibility, is is visible rather. Is visible. And plug that into a branch. Like so. That means it now will check that the ability that's been assigned to the cast has, is still there and the cast bar is still valid and still appears there. Okay, so I'm gonna hit compile and close that. And that's fixed those two, two issues for us. So that goes down and that move, it doesn't interrupt anymore because it's been cast out already. So now we've got to link, link up the actual animation and the fireball effect for the fireball projectile. So first thing we're going to do is create the fireball itself. So I'm going to go into my abilities and go into projectiles. And in here we're going to just create a new folder called fireball. And this is where I'm going to put my ability actor in. As well as all the effects and textures and things like that I need for this spell. So I'm going to go and create a new particle system. And I'm just using Cascade for this, because we're doing a very simple one. System. And we're going to open it up. Now, I'm not going to go into loads of detail about how to create this fireball effect. And to save a bit of time, I've actually already made that video for the fireball effect made in Cascade. So look in the description below and you'll find a link to that video. Follow the video and you'll see how we make the Fireball Cascade particle system. And that's where I also explain how this, uh, what this all does and, what all, and what's the function of all these things you see in front of you. So I'm gonna, you may want to pause this video, go to that one and then come back to this one. And I'm gonna cut and hey presto, we're gonna have a Fireball effect. Here is our Fireball particle effect. I'm gonna click save and close this and I'll open up my ability fireball actor and open the full blueprint editor and in here we need to be able to set up the ability to give it a particle effect now what I'm going to do is rather than add a particle effect to this the majority if not all my particle systems are going to require a particle, uh, uh, ability it's going to require a, a particle system so I'm going to go to the ability parent here and we're going to add a uh, particle effect, a uh, particle system, sorry, as a one of the components that comes with the parent. 
So with that compiled, I'll go back into my Fireball projectile and see that Pike system is now an inherited component. From there, I can choose my Fireball and in there go in the viewport. Hit compile for that. Okay, next for a our projectiles, we're going to create it, make it have a projectile movement. So rather than just give, add it to ability fireball and then in turn add it to every other projectile I ever make, I'm going to go into my ability projectile and on this one add the projectile movement component, and that allows it then to um, be applied to all its children, including the fireball. Um, I'm going to set some default values here, so initial speed I'm set to 800 and 800 and I'm going to click compile. Oh, I'm also going to turn off gravity. So change gravity there to zero, projectile gravity scale and hit compile. Now because we set the settings there on our fireball projectile, those settings will also be true here. So we don't have to do anything here, we're going to leave it as it is there. And so you can see what it looks like in game. When I drag this out, you see the fire effect. Can't see it because of the scene component blocking the view. But as it moves through the air, it will leave a trail of particles behind it. Okay. So what we need to do is tell that to spawn in the player's hands. So when we tell it to spawn, you will see it appear and then launch off. Okay, so what we actually want to do is not make it launch yet. We want it to launch when the cast bar is finished, uh, so it's staying still inside the player's hand as if it's casting the spell, and then it will launch off when the cast bar is successful. So let's turn it off our projectile movement until we tell it to go. So what we want to do is open up our ability parent. And in here, we've got just the cast ability printing a print string. And after that, we need to then tell it to activate its effect. Okay, so what we need to do in here is create a new function called activate effect. And what that is going to do is basically handle the activation of any sort of movement, particles, um, any kind of effects you want it to do. So for example, when we do buffs later on, this is what you will handle like the uh, healing of things over time, for example, because you can make this activate the effect of the of the spell. So the activation effect is what is going to basically turn the spell on, okay? So the cast ability is gonna be the thing that handles the uh, sort of messaging to that to the player. So that's like taking my mana and things like that. And then activation of effect is what is going to be the, the, the juicy part, which tells it to do things. So once that's there, we're then going to go on to ability projectile. And by default, we want our projectile movement over here in the component to be not active. So scroll down and see auto activate, turn that off. Next, we can delete all this stuff here for now. And what we're going to do in here is search for that activate effect uh, event and what you need to do there is call the parent class so right click on there and add call to parent function this means it will then it will first of all do the code that is found on the parent for this uh, function and then do its thing and its thing for the fireball is to tell the projectile movement to activate So let's start moving. Now the cast ability is where things will happen. So we need to right click here and do cast ability, event cast ability. And like what we've done here, we need to call a parent class or parent function. So right click call to parent function. So that will call everything that's on the ability parent. And then you do the thing that is specific to our projectile. So this will be where we do animations later on, but ultimately we'll be first of all just telling it to activate the effect. And hit compile. So now when I push play, 
and I cast this fireball, it stands still. When it gets to the end, it shoots out. So the last thing you need to do on a fireball is tell it to destroy itself when it hits a wall. So for that, we're going to go to the projectiles folder, and look at our fireball ability. And in here, we don't need anything apart from the hit event. And the hit event is going to trigger and we're going to do uh, just tell it to destroy itself. So come out of there, destroy actor. Later on, we'll do things such as like, damage to the weapon targeting and so forth. But for now, we'll just do destroy actor. And I'm going to hit compile. And what we may also want to do is actually before that, is do a little explosion. Now I'm just gonna use the start of content explosion that come with uh, your project. So we're going to spawn emitter at location. We're gonna choose the explosion and the location is this hit location there. Hit compile, and let's test that out. So get in front of the wall, shoot our fireball out. Pardon me, there was a, a little bug there. Oh, we forgot a step. Um, so a hit event will only occur when a physics object is hit, okay? And it will always start by looking at the root. Now the root for this is a scene component which has no collision on it whatsoever. So what we need to do is go to the ability parent. No, oh, wrong one. The ability parent. And we need to add a sphere collision. And drag it to the top. And I'm just going to name, uh, rename this one to Ability Root. With that change, you go down and check that we have got collision on it. And we're going to leave it as overlap or dynamic for now because this thing may uh, be used for something that doesn't necessarily have to hit something. So we're going to leave it as overlap. And then for projectile, I'm going to click on my root that we just added. Scroll down to where you see collision presets. And expand that open. I'm going to change it from overlap or dynamic to custom and I'm going to tell it to object response for wall static be block. Hit compile and close that. Now that will also affect the fireball because we changed it on its parent. You will see if I scroll down here, it's changed that here too. Okay, so I'm going to close that and push play. And there you have it. So we cast a fireball, it spits it out and explodes on impact. Cool. Okay, so what we're doing in the next episode is adding the animations for the character to make it look like they're casting the spell and then they launching the spell. So join us in the next part uh, right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. If you do donate $1, it supports me and what I do, and you get access to that content uh, uh, early before anyone else. So big thank you to everyone who's shown their support so far. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button, as well as if you have any suggestions, there's a comment box down below. Help yourself to comment away of what kind of things you'd like to see. Thanks very much everyone for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.